I saw the end of last week uh, where he made a fairly uh, definitive statement saying that uh, uh, for the indefinite future you could anticipate no new revenues of, uh, in this administration requesting no new revenues uh, for the uh, highway uh, and transit uh, the trust fund, service transportation trust fund. Uh, and I'd just like to square that uh, with uh, the excellent work your department just did recently. For instance, uh, last week you announced that we have a $77.7 .7 billion, B billion dollar backlog in transit. Uh, we know that this backlog is killing people. It's killed people right here in Washington, D.C. It'll kill people uh, in other parts of the U.S. We have outmoded, obsolete, obsolescent uh, transit systems in a state of uh, not very good repair. Uh, and uh, our current investments uh, will uh, not even keep up the current state of poor repair and capital backlog, uh, let alone uh, begin to improve. Uh, we're investing uh, now about uh, 80 percent of what we need to invest just to maintain uh, the existing systems in their current state of disrepair. And we're at uh, about uh, 60 percent or 50 percent of what we would need to improve uh, the systems and performance. And that's not building new systems. That's just given the legacy systems. And there's a heck of a lot of places in the United States where we need to build out new systems. You know the phenomenal demand. And I, I guess I've just got to wonder, uh, and then we can go over to the highway side. We have 150,000 bridges that are uh, obsolescent, uh, either functionally uh, obsolete or structurally deficient. 150,000 bridges. 61,000 uh, lane miles are in poor or fair condition on the national highway system. Uh, we are investing about two-thirds of what we need to maintain the current state of disrepair. That is, it's getting worse, same as with transit. And, uh, you know, we would need an additional $96 billion per year to make all the cost beneficial highway improvements and eliminate the bridge backlog. It would also mean, were we making those investments, millions of jobs uh, uh, across the country. So I, I guess I'm trying to square uh, your advocacy. I know you're under the constraints. Uh, I, I'm not quite so uh, sanguine as the chairman is, having had his meeting with Larry Summers, that the White House economic team has come around on the value of infrastructure investment. I certainly haven't seen any advocacy out of the White House for infrastructure investment. And when I list those needs. And I hear Mary Peters talking, which is saying all we need is private-public partnerships and uh, tolling. And then the Obama administration addition to that is and an infrastructure bank. I just want to know how it's going to work. Let's take transit systems. There's no transit system in the world that makes money. We have this massive backlog just to bring it up to safe operating conditions. How are we going to do that? We're going to double, triple, quadruple affairs and drive all the riders off? So how do you do that with, without any additional investment? And then on the roads, bridges, and highways, 150,000 bridges, are we going to toll 150,000 bridges so we can rebuild them or bring them up to snuff? Are we going to toll the entire federal interstate system so we can begin to bring that system up to snuff and make the, uh, the investments we need? I mean, Mr. Secretary, with all due respect, I know that you are constrained by the people you work for or with, uh, but um, to say that somehow we're going to uh, seriously address these issues through tolling, through private-public partnerships, uh, and with an infrastructure bank, uh, just it, it, it's not it's not going to get us there, and and I think that's very sad. So I, I guess my, you know, this is more of a speech than a question, but if certainly uh, give you the courtesy of responding. But I I, I just don't see how those nostrums are going to begin to meaningfully address this huge huge hole in the transportation infrastructure of the U.S. We have gone from being first world and the envy of the world. I kept saying third world until my colleague, Mr. Blumenauer, said you're insulting third world countries. They are investing a higher percentage of their GDP in transportation than we are. 
So I've taken to calling us fourth world, that is formerly first world, vaulting over the third world countries to a system that is the envy of none. There are people in the administration that get it when it comes to infrastructure, including the president. Uh, the, the economic recovery plan had $48 billion, 8 billion times more than we ever had for high-speed rail. That was the president's initiative. At the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue, don't get it, is not quite accurate. Right at the top, the occupant of the White House gets it. He knows that infrastructure investments will put people to work. That's why we receive $48 billion. Everywhere that I've gone, Mr. Chairman, 80 cities, 30 states, what I've talked about is the fact that we want to work with Congress on the way forward for a transportation program. We support the lion's share of what's in Mr. Oberstar's bill. It's a good bill. The only thing that we need, the only thing, is about $450 billion. And you know as well as I do, the Highway Trust Fund is deficient. So I don't know if the courage is around here to do something about that. So the reason that I talk about tolling, public-private partnerships, the infrastructure fund, is because we need to think outside of the box about how we're going to do all the things that the President wants to do, that Ray LaHood wants to do, that you all want to do. Look, at, there's no disagreement about what the needs are in America. You've, you've cited them very well, and I don't disagree with that. I'm on board. We, we love doing transportation projects at DOT. The people that work there love doing them. The President believes in it. We need to work together to find the resources to get, to get a bill and to get the job done. If we do that, we're well on our way to, to meeting all of the needs that you so well stated. If I could, Mr. Chairman, I know you're indulging me in, in length of time, but just if I could just focus in because it's such a big subject. It was almost 4% of the stimulus, 4% went into transportation infrastructure, 4%. If we'd uh, eliminated the tax cuts and taken, you know, half or a third or a tenth of that money, we could have created a heck of a lot more jobs. But beyond that, just let's focus in on Chicago because it's a small part of this. But they have a they have about a seven billion dollar backlog on their transit system. Parts of the L are propped up with two by four. Well, they're not two by fours. They're like big wooden beams. That's great. We make wooden beams in my district. But really, it probably should have steel supports so it can go more than four miles an hour over those sections. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, pretty sad, and this is the President's hometown. They got $240 million. They spent it in 30 days. They said, well, we easily could have spent a billion dollars in 30 days, because all we did is take projects off the shelf that we haven't been able to fund. Uh, and these are nice projects that have huge employment components because you're buying rail cars, you're buying steel, you're buying computer systems, control systems. These have a huge multiplier effect. So I don't see how tolling public-private partnerships or an infrastructure bank gets us there because transit systems lose money. So and if we, raise the, if we theoretically raise the fares enough in Chicago to pay for that backlog, people wouldn't be able to afford to ride the thing. So there needs to be a federal effort, federal leadership uh, on these issues. And you know, I, I'm glad we have an advocate in the White House, but somehow it hasn't translated. Uh, to, uh, you know, a real, like, okay, we've got to get this done. How are we going to do it? Oh, we'll throw out what Mary Peters said, tolling private-public partnerships, and we'll add on an infrastructure bank so people can borrow money that they can't pay back. But anyway, I've been Gen on. Gentlemen, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. time has uh, expired with enthusiasm. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you for your support for our bill. You've said it many times in many ways in many places. Uh, I would just make an amendment, a small amendment to your statement. Uh, we need $450 billion, as two national commissions have recommended. But of that 450, we really need only $140 billion more than is now coming into the trust fund. That's $20 billion a year. Surely we can sit down and figure out where that money will come from. <laughs>